Today, we're editing this cityscape image from downtown Chicago. So here's the image that we're working on today. It's a very nice image as is. And I know a comment that I get often is that, oh, I like the original image better than the edit. That's kind of the point. My images, they don't necessarily have to be edited, but it's my own creative style. I'm an artist, I'm a photographer, and I like having that creative aspect to it. That's why I edit my images. The first thing I'm going to do is change my profile from Adobe Color and set this to Adobe Standard. I just like starting with Adobe Standard, just my preference. So the first thing, let's do our white balance. So I kind of want a sort of cool metallic look to this image. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's bring our temperature down quite a bit. For our tent, I think it's actually good around 1920 of where it was. Next, we're going to adjust our highlights here. So let's bring these down significantly. Wow, just doing that, it almost turned it into a nighttime image. Let's also open up our shadows and we're going to open them up all the way to 100%. And then for our white level, we'll bring that to about 17, 20%. Since we opened up our shadows all the way, what are we going to do in our black level? We're going to decrease that. So let's bring down that black level so that way we get that contrast in that image. So next, let's add a little texture, add maybe about 15% and then increase our clarity as well to really get those edges looking real defined. And then let's run just a smidge of dehazing here. Maybe go about there. So as you can see, we really got that contrast there and that's what I really want. And then next, let's go to saturation. And we're gonna go about 10. And the reason I'm doing that is because we have a lot of nice colors here. So I don't wanna really take them away that much. So that's why we're adding in some saturation here. Then the next, let's go into our tone curve. And so for our tone curve, I want to selecting my point curve of skyline strong. So let's come back out of this. And now let's make our adjustments to our shadows. We'll open those up here, about 75%. And then we'll also adjust our points here. Let's go about 15 there, and then bring this up to 60. All right. Now, once we've done that, we'll come down to our HSL or our color, mix, color mixer panel and start making our color adjustments. And this is where it gets really fun. For our color, I want to alter just a smidge of the red, go a little orange. For our orange, let's go a little bit more yellow. And then for our yellow, let's go more orange. It's funny how I do that, isn't it? And then for our green, we'll go a little bit more in the green hue. For our aqua, we'll increase this. For our blue, we'll bring it down to more of a teal color. And then finally for purple and magenta, let's add a little bit of purple, go a little bit more red in the magenta. Now for our saturation, let's decrease saturation for the red a bit, but increase it for our orange. Oh, look at that. You see how those colors are starting to come together? For our yellow, we'll leave that as is. For our green, however, we're going to really ramp this up. Maybe add in some aqua there. Now for blue, purple, and magenta, we're going to bring those down evenly. Let's come down to about negative 60 because we don't want that blue overpowering our image. Same for our magenta and purple. That looks good. Look at how we really changed the dynamics of this photo. Isn't that nice? Okay, then finally, let's make some luminance adjustments. Let's brighten up those reds. Also the orange, let's do that there. Let's do the same for green. Let's do the same for our blue. Oh, look at that. You see how we really opened that up a bit. And same for purple and magenta. Now we're coming to my favorite aspect, which is color grading. We're going to make adjustments to all of these. So let's start with shadows. Let's add in some warm color hues there. Let's add just a smidge in the saturation. And then we'll also go into midtones and we'll go into the warm colors here. That looks good. Add quite a bit there. Oh, look at that, starting to come together. 
And then let's increase the luminance a bit here. All right. And then next, let's go into highlights. For our highlights, same thing. Add in those highlights there. Bring in the saturation. And then increase the luminance. That looks good. And then finally, let's do a global adjustment. And let's go into more of the blue area this time for this. And let's just add a little bit, add a little bit. That's it. That's all we want. That looks beautiful. Okay, then now we're in the detail. You all know how I am about that sharpness. This photo is plenty sharp, but we just wanna add some more in, in there and then run a little noise reduction, about 20%. So finally, let's run our lens correction. Let's locate our lens, which is a Zeiss E-mount. And we're not gonna change anything here. Normally I will change the vignetting, but we wanna keep everything pretty bright. So let's keep that open. Finally, let's come down to our effects. And we're just simply going to switch this from highlight to color priority and bring this down just ever so slightly. Bring our midpoint all the way in, bring our highlights up, open up that feather, and then change the roundness of our vignette there. Until so then, once we've done that, we'll come back to the top, and let's fi finish this off with the profile adjustment. I think I wanna do the modern seven, so let's go in here, and I keep that towards the top because it's one of my favorites. And so let's use the modern seven here, and then for the amount, let's go to about 80%. So then finally, I want to make a few adjustments to my calibration as well. Let's adjust our hue of our red primary. Okay, let's change the green, go to about 40 there. And then we'll also alter the saturation. Now let's back off the saturation here. Go about negative 25, okay. And then for our blue, change our hue and the saturation. Last but not least, let's add a mask adjustment because we still wanna open up some of our buildings because we don't have as much detail showing there and I do want that to show up a bit. So let's go into our mask. And what I want to do is a select sky. Now watch why I'm doing this. We're going to do the select sky and our sky is selected, but I'm going to select the invert and now the buildings are selected. Very simple, isn't it? And I just wanna increase or open up my shadows. And then let's also increase the white level. All right, that looks pretty good. So finally, there we have it. That's a very nice, beautiful photo, isn't it? And you know, that's, that's how the process went. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Of course, if you are interested in any of my edits, you can always find my presets in my store at professorhines.com forward slash store. And you can find various presets such as my brand new series, Cinematic Tones. And as always, you can always go on my website at professorhines.com and find all of my various tutorials and reviews and upcoming events. So with that said, until next time, I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.